Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. And returning guest, Eric. We are now doing his CV axles because after we did a Toy Tech suspension lift, the extra stress on the CV angles tore one of his inner boots, ripped right at the small juncture on the small side. So when I went to drain his differential fluid, he hardly had any gear oil. So you could see that this is the amount of gear oil he had in there, not much. So he's got to have a leak somewhere. What we also noticed on the drain plug is that he has, when you look at the rag here, there are some pretty big shavings in here. So I think some damage happened because he was running way too low on gear oil. He bought this truck used. So those are some nice big chunks of metal that are part of his gears that are now not on his gears anymore. Oil had to leak out somewhere, right? So we're suspecting that the seals on the differential, like right at the end of the differential shafts, there's two oil seals, one on each side. We're gonna pull those out and plop those back in thinking that that was most likely the culprit of where the oil leak was coming from. The capacity is like one quart and he had like a half a cup at most and a lot of metal shavings. Here's the parts. Okay, so this is the right one. The right oil seal, which would be the passenger side, is 9031147013. Left side, the driver side, is 9031147027. What are we going to use to get these things out? I have this slide hammer puller with jaws that I can put on, so I plan on putting this inside, hooking the, the seal, and slide hammering, slide hammering it up. And then to drive it in, well, I'll show you what we're gonna drive it in. I have this press sleeve kit, and I have a couple different ones that fit the outer diameter of the seal, and I plan on using those to drive them in. All right, so we're gonna pull our first one out. The seals we're talking about, this is the end of the front differential on the passenger side. And we're pulling this seal out on this side, and then we'll show you what the other side looks like. This is a bigger seal than the one on the driver's side. This one is a smaller diameter. See where the gold meets the silver? This is the seal right here. This is the housing of the differential. So this is a smaller seal on the driver's side. So same thing, we're gonna get the two jaw puller and slight hammer them out. And then we're gonna pound them in with a couple different sleeves that I have. This is a sleeve kit that I bought on eBay. It wasn't too much. Might not be something everybody has. You might just find a piece of pipe at a hardware store that will fit over it. But I found two. This is gonna fit over the driver's side seal. And this bigger one meets up with the outer diameter of the passenger side one. I have this piece right here. Yeah, you're just gonna somehow pound on. This is gonna be the hardest part because it's getting a hammer in there and hammering on this to where I can knock it in square. I think my biggest concern with doing the seal is just being able to drive it in straight and not damage it. So right now, I have the jaws forced on this inner diameter. It's as tight as I can get this thing. So it's capturing the metal, not just the rubber here, but it's capturing the metal. And then I'm gonna slide hammer it out. There it is. So this is what the seal looks like. Obviously a little bit contorted now that I slide hammered it out, but this is what it looks like. So it's got a metal outside with a rubber lip on the inside. It looks like this one wasn't necessarily leaking. It didn't show any major signs of leaking, but the other side was a lot more oily residue. So we suspect that the driver's side was the culprit for the leaking of the front differential. But since we're here and we got the CV axles, we're doing a reboot of the CV axles. We may as well change both sides. It just makes sense. Always a good idea before you get ahead of yourself is compare the parts. So we got them matched up. They pretty much look exactly the same. They're the same diameter, but it looks like the same width. And then how about this inner part? Well, it's deformed. It's not going to really show very well. But yeah, it looks to be the same one. So we're going to plop this one in. Like I was saying earlier, I have these different size press leaves. So I picked one that fits this diameter really well, the outside diameter. So you can see, looking down, the it fits pretty good because I want to be hammering as much on the outside edge as possible and not uh, deform it. So it's going to be strongest right on the edge than on the inner diameter. So I want to be as far out to the edge. So this is the widest that fits that I have that hits the outside edge. It's almost perfect. So I'm going to use just a little bit of grease on the outside to help it hopefully insert better. So YouTube viewers, See this lip right here? I'm hitting it with this little pry bar. That's the depth that you want to press the seal in. 
there's no natural stop for this seal. So you can't just pound it in till it stops because it could drive in further than you want. So you want it basically equal to this first lip. That's your guide because this factory service manual says it's gonna go in 5.5 millimeters. So if I measure this with this tool, gauge to the lip, my digital measure, and we come back out, and you can see it says 5.4, so that's about right. So you basically have to pound the seal into that equal with this little lip here, and then you're good. So is that gonna be easy? No, not really. You're gonna have to tap a little, and then look, and hopefully it's going in straight. So it's much nicer when it has a natural ridge that you could stop against, like the oil seals for the rear axles, but this doesn't have that. So we have to be careful when we're pounding this thing in. We don't go in too far. If we go in too far, then we have to damage it to take it back out, and we gotta buy another one. So we gotta be careful. The idea of the jack is actually just tall enough to support this sleeve to where I don't actually have to hold it with my hand. I could let the, the sleeve rest on the jack. And then I got this uh, plate on the front of it. And I can't really get a, a good blow with the hammer. I'm gonna hit it sideways. Right, yeah. Like I mentioned earlier, it's imperative that you don't go too far. Go a little at a time because if you have to pull it back out, you have to damage the seal. So we're trying to get it right the first time. And you can see I don't have a whole lot of room to strike. So I'm using the side of the hammer as a striking surface instead of being able to hit it like a normal hammer. Yeah, yeah it's still high right in the here. Yeah. Right in there for sure. So like this corner right here. Yeah. It's still high on the top. I could feel a little bit more of a lip. It looks pretty flush all these other parts, but it looks like it just got to go a little bit more in on the top. I'm just measuring how we did, so on the bottom lip, we were perfect, like 5.44, so let's see where I'm at on other spots here. 5.8, okay. The old trusty factory service manual tells us that the drive-in depth of the oil seal for the front differential seals is 5.5 millimeters, so we're right there. We're right in the five millimeter range at a few different measurements around the circumference. So now we're gonna work on the other side. Yep, they look like the same ones. Same width, same diameter. Yep, look good. Looks like the same one, good deal. Well, it's about even, but let's see. Needs to go more. How straight is it? Pretty Looking straight. Pretty dude. straight. Okay. Could be more of the top right. Like oh, no. over up here, this area. Okay. Does it look like it? I mean, looks can be deceiving, but yeah, I'd say so. It's looking good. So it's sunken right there, so I gotta hit it a little more on the top. 
edge right there, huh? Yeah. And then I might stop after that. I think, because otherwise it's driven in pretty good. A little bit more on that edge, huh? Right, right there, huh? Yeah. You think so, right there? Um, I would, actually, you know what, that looks pretty good. So, we remember that it was flush with this lip right here. That's 6.13. We're a little bit deeper on that one, I think. Okay, so we're done with pressing in both seals on the front differential. The hardest part of this is not really getting them out. It's getting them knocked back in at the right depth. So what I would suggest you do is eyeball what they look like before you take them out. If you have one of those little gauges that I was using, those micrometer or, or digital caliper, if you have one of those, great. If you don't, just visually see the lip where it, it normally is riding before you knock the other one out. And then when you knock the other one in, you gotta be really patient that you just don't hammer on it because one side might get knocked in really far while another side of it, like the left or up or down, whatever, is sticking out a lot. So you have to hammer a little bit, take whatever sleeve or whatever you're using to press the seal in, take it out of your way, take a look. Oh, I need to hit it a little bit more pressure on the upper part. Tap, 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 take another look. And it just, it's a tedious thing, but because there's not a natural stop for the seal to rest against, this is what you have to do. You have to just knock it in really carefully so you can get it as, as even as possible. If you have one of those digital calipers, sure, take a measurement. It's supposed to be 5.5 millimeters sunk in. So you could just eyeball it, just match it up to what it was before and it's gonna be close enough, okay? And then you're good. So if you don't have one of those fancy slide pullers like I have, you can get an affordable seal puller that like Harbor Freight sells. It's got one little hook on it with a long shaft with a bar that you can hammer against to knock out a seal. And, and that's a much more affordable than that fancy slide hammer thing I bought from OTC. All right, so this is how you change your differential oil seals on the ends of the differential if you were experiencing a leak. Thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean and Eric. We'll be back with more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. All right, fixed it. Where'd he go? Uh oh, are the freaking seal police gonna get us?